All right, and welcome back. In the last episode, we added our little uh, spring, well, kind of a spring, it's a force joint. We are just saying that these two objects attract each other at this point. And yeah, that's what we did last time. And uh, today we are implementing a spring joint. Um, the spring joint is going to differ a little bit. Um, it's going to have a rest length. That means if you press the spring together, um, it's trying to expand again, okay? And then there's a certain point where the spring just won't expand and won't shrink, okay? That's our rest length. It's resting there. And if we try to expand the spring, then it's going to have a force in the opposite direction. It's going, it's trying to shrink again, all right? And that's what we're going to do in this episode. All right, then let's jump to Visual Studio Code back. And we are going to add a new file. And this is going to be a spring joint, of course. So, spring joint .js. There we go. And let's add our class. Spring joint extends from joint. It's going to have a constructor with a connection, um, a spring constant. The spring constant um, um, is going to be used uh, as a parameter how um, well how powerful the spring will be. And then of course our rest length. And then we also well we need to call the super of course, say connection. and then we need to set these variables variables. <laughs> and this is, uh, spring constant and this dot rest length is the rest length. All right, then of course we have our methods again: update connection A and update connection B. And uh, that's it. Um, we are not using the draw method. We are not overwriting it. And now, first to our update connection A. Um, we get our anchor positions first again, so we can just copy these lines from our first joint and add it to our spring joint, also to the other method. Then we need to get a direction, a direction vector, and we can simply do this by subtracting the anchor position B with anchor position A. There we go. Then we get a distance. And this is direction dot length. And then we calculate our rest distance. And the rest distance is the current distance minus the rest length. Okay, and uh, I'm going to explain this line again a little bit. As I said, the rest length is the length where our spring is not acting anything. It's the state where spring, yeah, is resting, right? <laughs> and uh, it's not going to pull anything. It's not, it, it, it won't shrink, it won't expand. That's the ideal um, distance a spring want to have. And um, the distance, of course, is our current distance, <clears throat> okay? So the distance, of course, between two points. And if the distance between two points is greater than the rest length, then the spring will have a force in a direction. And in this case, it, w uh, it wants to shrink again. And if you subtract, for example, for example, if you have a point which, uh, well, a distance which uh, which is 100 pixels, and we have a spring with a rest length of 50, all right, then we calculate the the rest distance with um, 
100 minus 50 and then the rest distance is um, yeah 50 and that means the string will move uh, in one direction for example if um, the if we have the other case so for example if the rest length is 100 and the distance is 50 then we have 50 minus 100 so this will be minus 50 so the spring will act in the opposite direction okay and so we can get this effect of shrinking and expanding and the rest distance is uh, the amount um, where the where the spring wants to go this distance basically to get the rest length again <clears throat> okay and uh, yeah and we can use this to calculate the force the spring has and we can do this by um, saying force of magnitude so the force is going to be the rest distance times the rest re uh, length if if the rest distance well if the distance between uh, the two points for example if we have 50 for distance and the rest length is also 50 then we get a rest length of zero all right this, this the rest distance will be zero so the spring won't move anywhere it's the perfect state uh, then the force will be zero too because we are multiplying the rest distance this will be zero with the rest length and with a lot of other um, variables actually with the spring constant and um, another variable I'm going to introduce later and if the rest distance is zero so the force will be zero okay so there will be no force at our rest uh, length of course if the if the um, spring will be stretched the force is acting there is a force but in the opposite direction and so we get this effect of that the uh, spring will shrink for example all right um, then we need to normalize the direction because we want to move well actually we want to add a force but um, for this we need the normalized direction and we need to calculate a force actually with the right direction and yeah that's pretty easy we just scale the normalized direction with the force with the calculated spring force and then we say this dot richie a at force at point at the anchor a position with the force there we go and that's our spring for connection a um, for the other connection it's the same um, but in the opposite direction and maybe you ask in the force joint we multiply it with 0 0.5 why we didn't do that in this spring joint here well there is one exception actually we could use that in our force joint too but I guess we didn't um, and this is the case when we have a kinematic object so a object which isn't allowed to move and uh, then to get the same effect um, we have to decide um, which side gets the full force or just half of it if we have a kinematic body then the kinematic body won't move so the full force um, the yeah the other body which can move will get the full force of it um, so not just 0 0.5 um, it's going to have the full the full uh, well one <laughs> um, force and we can do that by saying I'm gonna do this right there by saying um, force halving so we're deciding if you want to half the force by this third we're going to check for the other rigid body is it a kinematic body kinematic 
And if so, um, we're saying one, and, and if not, we are dividing the force between two springs. If not, we're saying, okay, this spring will get the full force. And we can say, uh, we can multiply this one to our first magnitude calculation. <clears throat> Sorry. All right, and then we have our calculation for the spring. Um, what I'm going to do is, I think um, I want to add a dynamic color to the joint so that we are going to see um, when the spring is actually um, acting in which direction. Okay. And I think uh, we need to do something in our joint connection. So yeah, right. And let's add here a color, a default color. And this will be orange. Okay, and now we can say um, this dot color with drawing the line. All right. And then um, I'm also saying if if the rest distance is smaller, just a little a little bias, okay? If it's smaller than minus five, then um, this dot joint connection dot color is going to be blue, and if the rest distance is greater than five. Then I'm saying this the joint connection the color will be red. Okay, and if the if the spring is settled, then I'm I'm going to say this the joint connection the color is orange again. All right, and now we can copy everything and paste it in uh, connection B. Uh, of course, without the anchor position, we already have that. And now we just have to make sure that we copied everything right and we um, change everything in the right order. This will be anchor A pos minus anchor B position. The direction is right. This rest distance is the other way around. So let's change that to this one distance. Okay, then this one must be rich A. Then the force magnitude, that's the same thing. The calculation of the direction is also right. The direction, force magnitude scaling, the direction is already in the right order, so we don't need to um, change this one. We need to change this one though. So rich B at force at point, and we need to change um, anchor B position right there. Okay, and that's it, hopefully. Yeah, now we can try, uh, we can go to the simulation and try out our new joint. And this joint, I think this is already uh, right. Uh -huh. And here we can just say spring joint with a joint connection, with the right joint connection here. I'm going to say um, it's going to have a spring constant of 0 0.01 and a rest length of, let's say, 200. All right. And then let's jump to the browser and see if it's working. But of course, it doesn't. Ah, yeah, uh, of course, we need to add our spring joint to the HTML file. I always forget this step, so let's add this one. I'm going to add it right after the first joint. Spring joint, okay. 
and then jump back to the browser and refresh. There we go, that's all right. Yeah, it's already acting. Let's see if it's right. Okay, <laughs> seems like it's uh, kind of flipped. It's really, really interesting effect. Um, I think I'm gonna cre uh, add a little bit more strength to it. I'm gonna say 400. Let's see what's happening. Okay, there's definitely... Yeah, there's definitely something weird happening. I'm going to take a look and I'll be back in a second. All right. Uh, yeah, I found the error. Um, in the source code, well, not in source code, in our code, we already flipped the direction. So we calculated the direction, the opposite direction. And um, I also flipped this calculation. But we don't need to do this because the direction is already in the opposite. So we just can leave this like in our update connection A uh, method, like there. So we can leave it like this. And now um, we should get the right effect. So let's look at it. Yeah, that seems to be the right effect, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. When it's blue, um the the spring is uh sh well, it's it's compressed and when it's r when it's red, it's trying to um get to the rest distance again. So let's see. I'm going to move it like this and there we go. Now it's compressed. It's trying to um Put this ob these objects apart. I think I can set a higher spring constant. Now I'm gonna set it to 0 0.05. Yeah, and I think now it's clear clear that it's actually working. Awesome. Really interesting. Okay, let's try this one maybe. Oh. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, that's our spring joint. All right. Um, yeah. Um, that's the, ch the <laughs> that's the spring joint. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how we can implement a reverse force joint. That's the exact exactly the same thing like the force joint we did, um, but in the opposite direction. And after this, I'm going to show you how we can um, um, how we can um, filter some collisions um, by ignoring um, collisions with other bodies because we need that. Um, for fixed and hinge joints. Okay, then see you in the next episode and have a nice day.